Hello there, chess enthusiasts. We've uh, come back now with the game number three from uh, Fischer Spassky 1972 World Chess Championship. You may wonder what's happening with game number two. We just did game number one. Where is game number two? Well, there was a little bit of a story at that time. Uh, Fischer was distracted by the presence of the camera in the hall where they were playing. So he said, I'm not going to play. I'm not going to play with the cameras here because they are distracting me. Therefore, he didn't show up for the round number two. And after a few calls that he got from the members of government of the USA, he actually decided to return. I don't know if that was a causality or not, but definitely he returned for game number three. Now, Spassky is going to be white. Fisher going to be playing black. We're going to be having a Benoni defense. Well, it, it's it's going to be transposing to a Benoni defense, starts out the Indian game. And I'm not going to stop now with every single stuff that could have been played, for instance, in the opening here, because as you can see right now on the screen, we got knight f3, very playable, bishop f4, e3, knight c3, a3. All these are variation, theoretical approaches in the opening. We're not going to stop for that. What if, if this and that? No, we're going to go forwards uh, further into the game. And we're going to discuss as we're getting uh, closer to uh, complications. So now d5 taking a lot of space. Of course, you could have played a3. You could have played a3. There's nothing wrong with that one. But if you want to take more space uh, versus the black here, and the computer loves white here. So if you want to take more space, Go with the d5. And you also frustrating the knight, which can't go on c6 because you're taking that particular natural square for the black knight to develop. d5 takes and takes back. Knight can't go. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. That's mine. d6 now. You try to get the bishop active. Maybe make a pin. Maybe you just play that guy at some point, right? You want to get your pieces. Knight c3 and g6. Yes, you could have probably considered a6, b5 ideas, but if you do a6, white will be playing probably a4. So it might not be that easy as you think. Therefore, g6 chosen by Fisher. Again, the engine doesn't love very much black here because white is having more space. And as you know, guys, more space, more options. Remember this, if you can, get more space. Now, some people love to just play as it is, the Benani. So, you know, depends on your personality. Now, he decided to play e4 is the move that's being employed here. Now, why chooses to play knight f to d? Probably because he wanted to, after e4, avoiding getting into this sort of pin. So, I, I, I assume that's related to avoiding the complications with bishop g4. So, that's what he opted to play. Spassky, that is white. Now, e4 being played, bishop g7 developing, lacking space indeed, black here, bishop e2, Develop your guy. Castles the king. All nice, all cool, all sweet here. And castles. Not a problem. Again, a bit of an edge for white because more space available. So everyone is happy. White's doing a bit better here though. So now, <clears throat> rook e8. Again, always a good idea. Get your rooks on the e-file. You castle your king, move the rook on the e-file because those pawns will be challenged. Queen to c2, going for development, defending e4, um, you got to move your stuff. And also, one step closer to connecting the rooks on the back rank. And now, move number 11 for black. I think I pressed too quickly. This is the unorthodox move. This is that very psychologically surprising choice that Fisher did right at this stage. Let's call it an interesting move. Whatever engine you would use to assess the situation here, they're not going to give you this as an option. Because they're not going to give, they're going to give you something like knight b6, just move your pieces, you know, make space for, for this guy playing knight b6, or probably aiming to try and do something with that guy, getting, getting them out. You're not going to see this move proposed by the engine. But Fisher comes with knight h5, which is, which is not a blunder. It's not being punished now. There is no engine to tell you now, that's it, that's it, black is going to lose straight away. No, but it goes against the tenets of the middle game where you want to avoid having isolated pawns. Okay, you don't want to, you don't want to have this messing up, but, but wrecking the pawns defending your king. So I really do not advise to do this kind of peripheral knight's move in your own games. And frankly, you know something, everyone had agreed uh, had Spassky played correctly, he actually would have been way better in this game because actually he rightly accepts the knight 
nothing wrong actually you have to take that night and then take and again white is doing better increasingly better <clears throat> unfortunately he didn't follow up with the best moves <clears throat> knight to c4 <coughs> apologies developing getting the knight he avoids to trade in because he does want to give the other guy he does want to give black a tremendously powerful bishop aiming at h2 so you don't want to have this kind of complications with the queen coming over etc so he avoided the trade rightfully so boom queen comes over to h4 and this is the moment the pivotal moment the 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 most critical moment of the game if Pasky played the correct move, if Pasky here did the correct move, the situation would have been improved dramatically for White. One move was required from White to do here. That is my chess friends, F3. All the commentators and all the analysis afterwards pointed out this is the move. Number 15, White now is just supposed to do F3. What does that mean? It renders them useless. Knight will never make it on g4 no chance to do that because what's going to happen next is because this particular weakness that white had allowed by playing unfortunately bishop c1 to d2 so that is the stuff you don't want to play the game still looking equalish a little bit of an advent advantage for white but he lost the uh, power of the position he completely watered down the dominance so f3 was the move spassky should have played but he played bishop d2 what's happening next i'm going to show you in a minute knight comes over to g4 pressurizing threatening checkmate here you know and a bunch of complications so he had to take he was very very concerned about this one pawn takes now <laughs> and now uh ironically he managed to get again the pawns so to speak ready to marching down uh, and they might be connected at some point, etc. So, funnily enough, uh, bishop, that's a nice move. And queen to f6, aiming at the bishop primarily. And it's always good to have a battery. If the knight moves, you might be hitting on b2. Of course, Pask is going to see that. But just showing you the ideas behind the process. Now, another chance for Spassky here to have kept things under control. He was meant to drop the bishop on g3, and actually that feels like the most natural things to do in the universe, right? Bishop g3. He didn't do it, though. He played g3. Probably my understanding would be, from a human point of view, is that uh, you think that actually bishop on f4, supported by the pawn, um, will never allow to be to being challenged by any pawn on g or e. That's how you psychologically may be assessing the position. So if you get it on G3, theoretically, at some point in the future, he thought maybe there might be some issue with this guy coming down. So probably from this point of view, he opted G3, but Bishop G3 was actually the correct one. <coughs> and as you will see now, guys, um, the E4 would be the weakness long term in the game. And the problem would be F3 will not be available to play because that will create an enormous weakness around the light squares uh, surrounding the white king. So now he goes a little, uh, play bishop d7. You want to develop your guys. Uh, practically, you don't have too many steps, uh, too many available squares. But bishop d7 is very fine here. Rook to e1, a6, preparing b5. Of course. Rook to e2 tries to, he thinks that everything is settled here. And he tries to create a very nice battery supporting e4. Maybe he dreamt of pushing that pawn at some point. It's not going to happen. b5 first. Alakai is gone, well, so to speak. I mean, he got two heavy pieces on the e-file. And now queen goes on g6. He already starts to amount pressure on the e4 pawn. b3. But that comes out of cost. It's uh, you gotta be incredibly careful about this guy. And now black is simply getting stronger and looking better on the board. After any evaluation, black is definitely doing better. So now rook moves on e7 because they want to get the other rook behind. First, rook b8, a little bit of a pressure on the b file, takes and takes. And now you gotta be very careful here because we're going to be looking at this and we're going to be looking at that so after b4 and bishop b5 you got a very very serious problem i can't even look at the position so you must stop b4 or you're going to be just completely screwed here so you got to be very careful therefore 
before you put a stop that's not comfortable but hey you choose between two bad things you chose the least worst thing that's a plan i mean you do what you can okay c4 that's already a passer this is a passer this is a guy that can't be challenged by any pawn pawns and actually there is also a nightmare of a bishop there that's definitely not looking good for white here and the other rook went behind them pressure amounts on e4 rook e3 and poor white is paralyzed here. You can't move a damn thing. I mean, F3 is not playable here. You can't do F3 here or H3 because there is a monster of a guy here. That would be a disaster. You can't do that. So that's very unfortunate because you can't do F3. You know, this. so this is a problem. Rookie 2, you just have no options here, really. It's absolutely a disaster. King to H7. A little bit of uh, messing around. And uh, bishop now takes on c3 at the right time. At the right time because once the knight has been removed on c3, my friends, and queen is forced to take back, e4 is being hit three times. One, two, three. You take, they take, you take, <coughs> and queen takes. And now big exploding advantage for black here because the uh, black queen is very active and the bishop from d7 is going to join the harassment here so they try to generate like uh, oh i'm going to checkmate this guy no you're not going to checkmate queen g6 coming back and stopping g7 bishop went back because i mean where do you want to go man you could have gone d2 but hey look at this one bishop is being pinned now he can't move it. King tries to run away, not having problem on the back rank, but too late, I'm afraid. Bishop to f5 joins the attacking party here. And actually now Fisher, Fisher's queen keeps an eye on the b4. Mm. Juice is square over there. King e2. Check. You try to block, but hey, there is another check. And that pawn on b4 is going to fall. That's the whole strategy here. Queen going on b3. It's really incredibly painful. Check, and that's the end of it. That's the end of it. So they played here because probably he thought of creating some sort of checkmate threats on g7. Of course, uh, Fisher comes with a crushing attack. Bishop to d3, checking the king. And he just resigned here. Reason? Well, you can move the guy, let's say, on the dark square here. But what happens is queen to b4... And uh, you got a very serious problem because first you are in check. You think about blocking this way is checkmate in two. Check, drop, takes. And w uh, black, after removing the b4, had just created two passes on b, respectively, c file. You cannot stop those pawns now. Okay, this is game over and the Viking is in check here. So that was it. That was it. And if you think, yeah, what if I go here? It just It's just not going to work. Because we got this, you go here, you go e3, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna play this queen c1 and checkmate again. So unfortunately, that was it, and everything stemmed with. Let's just uh, roll back a little bit here with move number 15, ladies and gents. How important is one little move that dictates everything, and that is not here. Pardon me. Let me just go here. Yes, instead of bishop d2, the move that would have saved the game, who knows, maybe history would be entirely different. One single move changes the whole history. Well, at least the course of the game we're talking about. f3 was actually the move that would have given white tremendous control, dominance, and perhaps huge chances to winning another game versus Pasky. By the way, now it's 2-1. to one. That was the first time when actually in, in his career... Uh, uh, Bobby Fischer has beaten uh, Boris Pasky. So that was his first time uh, when he beaten him. And actively, uh, actually, he is going to win the tournament, the tourney. We're going to take the games now one by one. So thank you for watching game number three, uh, ladies and gents. Uh, we'll be back with game number four in uh, a few hours, a few days. Who knows? But soon enough, guys. Thank you.